In this video, we'll cover some overlooked editing features in Lightroom and Photoshop. And thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you ever find yourself working with photos that don't have enough resolution for your purposes, well, I found a pretty good solution. Even if you're shooting raw photos, you may have to crop in on a shot, effectively decreasing the size of your image. With your image open in Lightroom, all you have to do is right click and select Enhance. Enhance, Enhance. Now make sure super resolution is checked and it'll start working. You can then see the results in the preview window, click and hold to see the before and release to see the after. If create stack is checked after you enhance the photo, it'll just group the unenhanced version with the enhanced version, which can help keep your catalog neater and more organized. So let's click enhance and check out the results. Look at the resolution of the image now compared to the original. That's pretty cool. Now, just so we can really see the difference, I'm gonna open these up in Photoshop. You can see the enhanced version is four times the size of the original. So let's compare the differences between just manually resizing the original photo compared to the Lightroom enhanced version. On this photo, the results are somewhat subtle, but look at the edges of our subject without enhance and with enhance. So the enhanced version is definitely sharper. Sometimes you can get some weird artifacts depending on your original image, but I think this is a solid way to enlarge your photos, especially if you're printing them out. So in October of 21, Adobe finally gave Lightroom a much needed improvement to its masking features, most notably the select subject feature. This is a one-click mask that works really nicely, and there are a lot of uses for this feature, but let's look at one way to use it that you may not have thought of. When I adjust the white balance of my portraits, I'm usually looking to get the best skin tone. Sometimes though, I get the skin tone where I want it, but maybe I want the sky or the background to be a different temperature. So here we shot our model in this stream of golden light. Maybe we want to further highlight our subject by cooling off the temperature of the buildings behind him. I'll add a linear gradient mask, then click and drag down. Then I'll select subtract and select subject. It's now detected our subject and subtracted him from our mask. Now I can adjust the background all I want. I can change the temperature, lower the exposure. I can even lower the sharpness so that our subject pops out from the background even more. So let's look at the before and after. Now for another example, let's look at a more stylized use. Let's say we want to have the sunlight on the left to bring in a warmer temperature, but we want to keep the rest of the image cold and really emphasize the juxtaposition between the two. First, I'll shamelessly plug our new film emulation collection presets by slapping our Fuji Pro 400H portrait on this image. Now for the masking, there's a couple of ways you can do this, but I'll show you one. First, let's add a linear gradient mask. I want it to cover the strip of light coming in and have a similarly sharp edge. So not a big feather on this mask. Then I'll click on the mask layer, then subtract. You now have the option to subtract from your mask using any of these masking tools. Since we're working with hard angles, I will use a linear gradient again, and I'll subtract the top corner area from the mask. Now we can see we just have the light area selected. And I just wanna add with a brush over some areas of our model that the linear gradient missed. All right, now we can warm up the temperature. We could lower the exposure a touch. We can do whatever adjustment we want. I'll rename this mask to warm. Now let's duplicate the mask. I'll name it cold. Click on it to show the layers. I'll invert the first linear gradient. The second one, I don't want to invert it because then it just does this. Instead, I'll convert to add. And lastly, I will convert the brush that painted over parts of our model to subtract. Now we have the inverse of the first mask we made so we are free to make whatever adjustments we want. Here, I'll just cool the temperature down. Let's take a look at the before and after. While a lot of this is easier to do in Photoshop, it is cool to see Lightroom making strides at improving its masking capabilities. Now let's head into Photoshop. Here we have a photo from our art store challenge video where we were using props in front of the lens to get some pretty cool results. But in this shot, our model Jasmine's eyes are a bit soft from doing this. I'll start by duplicating the layer. Now I'll convert the new layer to a smart object. This way the sharpening will be applied as a smart filter, which keeps the settings editable. Then filters, sharpen, smart sharpen. First under remove, let's make sure that it's set to lens blur. This changes the sharpening algorithm to detect the edges and details in your image. Gaussian Blur will use the same method as the Unsharp Mask filter 
and motion blur will try to remove blur associated with camera or subject movement. The amount slider sets the amount of sharpening. A higher value increases the contrast between edge pixels, giving the appearance of greater sharpness. The radius determines the number of pixels surrounding the edge pixels affected by the sharpening. The greater the value, the wider the edge effects, and the more obvious the sharpening. Reduced noise will simply reduce unwanted noise. So your levels will depend on a variety of factors. First, I'm gonna try 30% for the amount and around 3.4 for the radius and reduce noise by 20%. That's getting better. I'm gonna try adding another Smart Sharpen to this, but now with a smaller radius around 0.5, no noise reduction, and around 100% for the amount. Now this looks pretty good, but I wanna just keep the sharpening to the eyes only and leave the rest of the image alone. So I'll hold Alt or Option on my keyboard, then click on the Layer Mask icon. Holding Alt or Option automatically fills the mask black, and if you aren't familiar with masks in Photoshop, only the white areas of layer masks show through. So now with a white brush, I will paint on the mask over her eyes so the sharpened layer only shows through those areas. Now let's look at the before and after. And what's cool about the smart filters is you can always dial it back or continue to tweak the settings of the sharpening filter. And if you'd like, you can also lower the opacity of the sharpened layer so it's not as strong. Okay, this one I'll keep quick because you may be familiar with it. If you wanna cut your subject out from the background, it's literally never been easier. First, press W to select the magic wand tool, then at the top, click Select Subject. This generally does a really nice job of figuring out what your subject is and selecting it. If there are any big adjustments to make, use the lasso tool or any other selection tool to clean it up as needed. Then click on Select and Mask. You can then change the view to whatever makes it easier for you to see what you're doing. Now, if you have any overly sharp edges, use the Refine Edge tool and paint along any edges you wanna blend better. You don't want the brush to be too big or too small. This is about right for this image. I then paint along the edges, keeping the middle of the brush as close to my edge as possible. When you release the mouse click, you will see some subtle changes to your mask. This is most useful for hair, so watch as I use the Refine Edge tool on her hair, before and after. Luckily, there's now a one-click solution to refining hair, and that's this Refine Hair button at the top. Look at how nice it's masked out her hair now. You can make any further adjustments if you need to. I then usually like to check Decontaminate Colors and set the output to New Layer with Layer Mask. I'll throw a solid behind the mask so we can really see it, and it looks pretty freaking good, all with just a few clicks. Now I gotta pay for this Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. If you've watched our videos before, you probably know that we are pretty big fans of Squarespace. We have been customers of theirs for years, long before this YouTube channel even existed, and still have our three Squarespace websites going strong. Usually we do something off the walls for our ad spots like fake our elopement to trick my mom, spoof old MTV reality shows, or do our best Peloton commercial parody. But I wanted to let you know about some new things cooking over at Squarespace. If you're a photographer looking to diversify your revenue streams, check out their new member areas. This allows you to sell access to gated content like video classes, digital downloads, or newsletters. Frickin' sweet. You can also showcase your photography with Squarespace's professional portfolio designs. Customize the layout, look, and feel to make it your own. Also, you can schedule and book appointments straight from your website. You need to lock in client meetings? Well, they can easily see your availability and reschedule if needed, making your life a heck of a lot easier. And if that wasn't cool enough, you can save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain when you go to squarespace.com slash mango street, or just click the link in the description. We hope you learned something new in this video. If there's anything else in Lightroom or Photoshop you'd like to learn, let us know in the comments below. If you would hit the thumbs up button on this video, it'll really help this channel out. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.